do we have more time for me to show how to actually win winning positions? Absolutely. I just want to say okay. I think that's very humble of you to 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 as you're 17 years old and you already um, say like, well, okay, I'll take this. It it definitely was me who was influencing it, and it, I should have won them. So um, kudos for that. Okay, let's continue. Okay, well, maybe I thought it was uh, this was enough uh, to show uh, to show all of my fails into, and, and I wanted to show a good execution of how to uh, win a winning position. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a game. It's a game that comes from. We already talked in our um, in our previous video of how uh, the Polgar sisters are some of my favorite players, and yeah. uh, this one is from Judith uh, playing against Anand, and uh, she was white here, and uh, it's an example. It's a good example of how to just slowly build up an advantage and then uh, and then convert it into a win, and I I think it's mm -hmm. it's one of the best examples for that. Um, so we have, yeah, I think we can start at this position. Um, it comes from the Nidorf. I don't know if you're familiar with these types of structures, mm -hmm. but if you are, it's going to be easier to find to find the plan. So what would you pick as a plan here for white? Hmm. And maybe identify, maybe let's identify the weaknesses and that should give an idea. Okay, so the weakness is uh, the D6 pawn and probably also at one point the A6 pawn. Then there mm -hmm. is the bishop on e7, which is not protected yet. Maybe this can also help. That's the weaknesses for black. And for white... <clears throat> I don't know, white is doing quite okay. Well, there's a double C2. pawn on, on the B C2 line. Is is the weakness, which is not that obvious yet, but yeah. C2 is the weakness because B4 is coming and then C2 is going to be weak. I see, so, okay. So yeah, but you're right. And also the other important thing for black is that, well, F5 and D5, especially the D5 square is the relevant one here. D5 is uh, usually a really important square in those types of structures and mm -hmm. white tries to put the knight on D5. So what do you think uh, white, white should play here? And you already know the the plan is basically <laughs> to put your knight on d5 at some point. So yes. you need to somehow prepare for that. Well, and hmm. Well, I could double up the rooks on d2 and d1, maybe to give mm -hmm. e a, a bit more pressure on d6, and then make it easier for my knight to advance to d5. Another idea which is not helping that much was. Uh, putting the bishop to g5, but there's the other knight, which is um, if I if I would take the the black knight on f6, then the black knight would take back. So that doesn't help me. So an idea would be probably to get rid of the knight on f6. And there's yeah, you're you're right. I think yeah. uh, I think you're you found the right move, but you're you're doubting yourself. Bishop <laughs> g5 is the move that Judith played. Um, huh. I think doubling the rooks on the D file, um, it's a it's a good plan for the future. But um, right now, it's really the our minor pieces that that is better to focus on. Mm -hmm. And the reason is your both of your rooks are working, and the one on A one is keeping the keeping the rook on A eight busy. So it's not like it's not doing anything. Yes. But true. rather, uh, but rather some of our minor pieces are the ones that need help. So Bishop G five is kind of a the principle of exchanging the right, the right pieces in uh, in a situation like this, because a bishop in in this uh, in this game, I think, is weaker than the knight because uh, because the position is rather closed and it doesn't look like it's going to open anytime soon. Plus, white's knights can always have that square on d5 and maybe even potentially on f5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Um, so yeah, here, now the next move is quite difficult, but knowing the weakness on C2, you might be able to find it. Hmm. Yeah, that is not helping that the rook is going to C8. So, I recently, no, this cannot be. 
Well, I would go again for rook d2. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it is not rook d2, Damn but it. I completely understand why you would go for, <laughs> for it. Probably what I would have played too. Um, but uh, it's more about it's more about minor pieces here for now. Mm, okay. Well, the other idea would be the super awkward. I don't like it. I cannot believe it's uh, uh, knight to e1. It is knight to e1. Oh, damn it. This was actually <laughs> my first idea because I don't like it because uh, the, the bishop is not... Um, um, Protected? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, can't, the knight can't, if, the knight oh, can't move away. That's so. true. There is it's, no that's chance fine, for the but knight to move away, yeah. That's why I think knight e1 is a really difficult move to find because it's not really natural to just bring your pieces back and it seems passive, but actually, what is the knight doing on f3? It's limited by the e5 pawn. Yes. It, if it goes to h4, well, g6 is going to happen and it's doing nothing there either. So actually on e1, it is more useful than it is on f3. And plus, um, it can go to potentially later d3 b4 and uh, d5 which is a long way mm. but maybe later but the main thing is that it defends c2 i have to mention quickly that i am in the rapid uh, interview i had with uh, veronica exler i played the super obscure knight to e1 and it was my best piece the whole game over so yeah <laughs> just just yeah. To, to to tell you that yeah okay knight e1 move. yeah sorry <laughs> Uh, um, so at this point, as as in the beginning, maybe I forgot to mention that white is slightly better out of the opening, which is which is natural. But yeah. um, now it's gonna with these few moves like bishop g5 and exchanging the right pieces, uh, and then remaneuvering the knights. You're gonna see how white's advantage grows um, little by little. So we remaneuvered the knight. Now we trade the knight uh, for the bishop, which. Mm -hmm. Which you said, you know, you recapture with the knight. But uh, what's, I think, who was it? I think it was Fisher, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong. But someone said that don't look at the pieces that leave the board, that leave the board, but the pieces that stay on the board, mm -hmm. which is a good way to think about exchanges. Mm -hmm. So here you might think, well, I'm trading a good bishop. What the heck for that knight on, on d6, d7? But... It's more about looking at which pieces stay. And that bishop that stays on e7 is not really a good piece. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's, that's, I think it's a good way to think about exchanges is not to really look at what you're giving up, but what you're, but what you're staying with. Um, I see. And of course, the bishop couldn't have taken because the rook would have taken on d6 in, in, in mm -hmm. any other game. So it had to have um, been the knight. And yeah, that makes sense. Yes. But. Our fight for the d5 square is still not over. And uh, actually, uh, I think Judith didn't play the best uh, in the best way here. But maybe you can try to find something she she didn't play. Um, how do you think we should um, continue our fight for, for d5? Hmm. So again, it's a long maneuver, but... You already found 91, so I think you can do the rest. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, of course. So now um, C2 is not um, that much of a threat anymore from, from the black side because the queen has not doubled up. Even if I take uh, the knight on C3, put it somewhere else, it doesn't matter that much. So I would think of the maneuver uh, knight to D3 and then knight to B4. Yeah, that's uh, that. That makes sense. Except I think it doesn't work out because of b4, and then the knight oh. has to go to g5, and I'm not sure. Well, you're not giving up a pawn because you're getting it back on b4, but I think you're gonna have to play d5, and then that kind of gives up the whole the whole square. Yeah. But uh, there's a little. There's a bit of a longer way. But right now, b4 is not a problem because knight d5 happens anyway, and then you take back with the rook and you mm. keep your square. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's uh, you're going on the other side with that knight. Oh, so f three? No, what? Mm -hmm. No, no. I I I think I uh, have you figured it out at home. What is the best move to 
strengthen d5 because that's of course the the main plan here <sighs> Oh, no. Is it G3? That's it is G3. Crazy. That is going to G2, E3, and D5. And uh, yeah, it does. I think it is an amazing maneuver. It is um, really cool, yes. <laughs> but I think that's, again, coming back to the advantage, this type of an advantage is quite permanent because that square on d5, that backward pawn on d6, isn't really going away. So you can take your time playing moves like this as long as black doesn't have any tactics working out. You can take as long as you want. Actually, I think it's good to take as long as you want because that leaves your opponent chances to make mistakes in a difficult position. Um, oh, so that's a good point that you just move. mentioned. I like that. Um, but so, she played knight d5 right away. Okay, so. sorry to to uh, I I I'm no we're 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 a bit longer in this video than we should be normally, but uh, I just want to mention that what you just said it's a, it's a very nice thing to keep in mind, and I haven't thought about it very often. If you have a better position, which is the case right now, there is a chance to sometimes play moves which makes make your opponent play worse moves because you have the better position you have more uh, pieces spreading out to to all the different squares and so it yeah so i get the idea of uh, g3 which is really pretty beautiful to yeah just to play out this advantage anyway sorry um d5 yes knight to d5 yeah, was right. played uh, right the uh, yeah it's, it's good that you emphasize that point i think it's uh, it's it's important to to remember it because when you're in a in a position like this where you know you're better and it's unpleasant for the opponent to play like you have to think about it from their perspective too that it's hard for them to play and mm -hmm. it's it's harder for them to play it than it is for you so it, they're actually it's it's going to be a lot more psychologically difficult for them to do it because they know they're worse and they have to defend uh, this bad position and it's more likely that they make mistakes and mm -hmm. remember when you let's say you're in a better position when you make a mistake Worst thing, probably you lose some of your advantage or you lose your whole advantage. But if they make a mistake, they probably lose the game. Good so point, it's more yeah. high stakes. Nice. Um, but yes, um, D5, knight uh, D5 happened and there was a trade. Obviously, taking with the pawn here would defeat the whole purpose <laughs> of fighting for that D5 square. So, of course, she takes with the rook. And uh, finally, the doubling happened and, and uh, more trades finally uh, <laughs> finally this is what you've been wanting the whole time um i think the next important moment is well g3 actually came up and now rook c5 so the next question is do you think um well you have two options either take the rook or um or not trade the rooks hmm. so what do you think is best hmm I think so I would have to try to look at the idea so there's this a6 pawn sorry I'm 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 a little bit slow but of course I'm not no as good as as you with with the with all this knowledge at the moment but um uh if I take the rook actually I think it's good to take the rook although I mean if black plays this move it definitely wants us to take the rook but then i like this open line which i can play the the queen into right away anyway it's probably not good to take the rook <laughs> well so it's uh it's not it's not bad but it's worse not to take it's it's better not to take it and mm -hmm. the reason for that is again kind of coming back to having a better position once you trade, unless you're trading into an endgame that you know is good and you know is winning or better, um, unless you're trading into that endgame, you're making it easier for your opponent to defend. So keeping more pieces on, usually beneficial for the attacker or whoever has mm -hmm. the better position because, um, because yeah, you're just making it easier for, for the opponent to play if you do start trading. But taking the rook is not too bad you still, like you said, we get control of the D file, and um, it's a pretty good position. But I think, um, 
I think it might be quite hard to actually win it. Although it it does look it does look pretty good, but um, I think it makes it, uh, it it's not as easy. You're leaving yourself less chances to make an attack, and actually, you're gonna see how that rock actually ended up going on a completely different, mm. uh, um, a completely different adventure. So it was mm. better it was better not to take. Well, oh. we were treating, but. Looks, I don't know if that looks passive uh, to you, but uh, well, it's uh, we're not really rushing at, at this point, and you can always come back to d5 if you would like to trade, if you would like to trade them. But the other good point you mentioned is if black played there, then that means they want that trade, mm. but that's not always a good strategy because the opponent just might be wanting the wrong thing, exactly. Um, yes, so, yeah, so yeah, uh, but when Anand plays that against you, he probably, he probably does want to trade, um. So yeah, and there it goes, at... the A5 pawn. I'm a bit scared of. Hmm. Yeah, um, and uh, at this point, there were a few more moves played. So she brought the knight to D5 instead. Um, Queen to D3. Okay. And we're playing. It's it keeps going on. Finally, uh, brought the knight here. Um, Very obvious that D5 is tempting to play. Yes, very tempting, but here she is actually doing a prophylactic move first, which... Um, King G2. Yes, King I knew two. it. Ha, because of it. The, the Queen H3 threat. Yeah, right. it um, is there. So again, she's, it's, it's a principle of not rushing when you're, when you're in a good position because that, knight's, that uh, D5 square is not running away from you. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do whatever I think. The knight is going. No, not yet. The knight is still not going. Hmm. Um, I'm wondering if my move... If it will ever go. <laughs> <laughs> what move is it? It's uh, move yep. 20 there something. We, okay, there so you now go. Now the knight finally reaches its goal. Um, and well, what white has to do with the rest of his pieces is bring the rook up to d3, which th this, is, this is not really an easy plan to find, but bring the rook to d3 and then bring... Uh, and then bring the queen to d2. So just again, just improving pieces. Swap around. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. so they keep going on. I think is this move. Uh, is this move three? Okay. So we finally. What did I do? I went back. <laughs> okay. Um. So I think we're at a point where we improved all of our pieces to the maximum. So. Um, what to do in a position like this i think it's usually here where people get frustrated where their their pieces are the best squares and there's still no win hmm. yes absolutely so yeah, yeah. It, it looks uh, so uh, by the way um we're going to make this a two-part series so we will show the first oh. uh, two two games in in one part and then the second part is how you will uh, how you're showing to to win this game i think this is uh, not that much right. of an overload. Sorry to to interrupt you with this, but I think no it is way. also nicer, like to have this a two part series, so we don't have to rush too too much in this. Anyway, yeah. So this position, it is. Uh, oh yeah. When 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 do you have to leave? By the way. No, it, it, it's all good. I still have a bit of time. Okay. Okay. So, um, yes, this is exactly a position where. Uh, I would also get frustrated to not... I, I wouldn't know how to, to win here. Although I have this amazing knight on d5. Um, but yeah, what is... what? How can you um, convert a winning position like this? What, what, what plans do you have to kind of focus on here? Well, I, that's my question. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I thought I'd trick you. <laughs> you tell me the answer. No, but um, so this black knight, uh, this black bishop on d8, he is protecting the a5 pawn. So there is no way to get there. Then he's uh, having this beautiful line uh, diagonal um, on the other hand. Uh, I think when I'm thinking about this a bit more longer, I might either 
tried to get pressure on the d6 pawn, which was a weakness right from the beginning. And now I've uh, lined up the, the pieces, the queen and the, the rook, already to maybe give this final hit. But then again, I would lose this beautiful knight. But they cannot stay there forever, I guess. And then, of course, yeah. the other idea would be to advance the pawns on the king's side slowly but surely with my pieces because there is... Uh, the rook is too far away at the moment, the, the black rook. Yeah, that's that's all I can give you. <laughs> yeah, the second idea, you're really close, is that we're going to start playing h4. Hmm. So, um, that's mm, the, the, the reason why queen d1 came first is so that it can um, it can attack h h5. So h4 is is the idea here. And again, it's uh, it's amazing how she uses uh, so many principles at once in this game so mm -hmm. she's creating another weakness which is going to be the king and also the d6 weakness is never going away and uh, she's going to remaneuver all of her pieces to the h file now um, it was better for black to just play h5 and uh, and not make it happen for for a while white is still going to try to play maybe f3 g4 at some point but it's going to take a lot longer mm -hmm. uh, but he allowed it to happen and uh, it was uh, it became really difficult to defend, but at the same time, I really think that Anand's defense was probably was probably a good strategy because he wasn't making any tactical aggressive moves, which he shouldn't be doing here, and he's just patiently waiting and he's waiting for her to prove that she really is better and mm. that she is. Better. So um, the rook b eight was was a good maneuver because. And rook b7 because it's it protects the queen wow. from coming to a7, that which is, is another idea. That's nice, yeah. Um, so he ha he was defending really well, and this is the right moment where uh, she's been preparing to take on g6, and mm -hmm. she she did do it here because um, black is not allowed to take back with h the h pawn. Can you try to guess why? I assume it's going to be a mate threat with the queen to g1 and h2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the queen on g1 is actually doing two uh, tasks. So the first one is it's coming to h2. Mm -hmm. The second one, you can't play a king g7 and rook b8 because it's still, still eyeing that a7 line. square. So the second you remove the rook, the queen is coming to a7 and winning the a5 pawn. Beautiful, wow. indeed. So queen goes to g1, and uh, I think this either wins or, again, brings a huge advantage. Uh, so black has to take with the f pawn, and that's exactly what this h5 plan was. Um, that's Preparing exactly for. what this h5 plan was about. Hmm. So now there's an open h file, except. Uh, uh, we're not really exactly too interested in that anymore. And there's another plan which comes in, and it's uh, and it's c5. So mm -hmm. maybe uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a little. I think the move itself was uh, hard to find if you can't uh, if you don't know the idea behind it. But because it looks unnatural to trade uh, the weakness that we've been talking about the whole game yeah. is the pawn on d6. So why would you trade it for your great pawn? So can you try to guess what White's uh, like? Why White really did that? Well, I assume to... Ah, no, that's not working. Um, so, yeah, you, you uh, lost your connection for a quick little moment, but now you're back again, and it was about the plan. Uh, what is the major idea with C5? And I just thought about that it is good to activate um, the, the queen and go for the, for the kill, kind of. Yeah, yeah, so... Um... It looks strange to trade a weakness on d6, uh, mm -hmm. but we're making now we're gonna have a, a lot more potential to attack this other weakness on a5. So the queen is coming to to c5, and it's gonna be really active here. Now we opened up the c file, mm -hmm. which our pieces are gonna are gonna start coming into. Well, not right away because the rook on c1 can't the, the bishop, can't go, yeah. but the other weakness, which was less obvious, was that. Um, there is now, a, because black had to take with the f pawn, this new diagonal uh, opened up to the king, and the queen can go to c4 mm -hmm. at some point. And uh, 
create some threats on that diagonal in case the black queen ever moves away. So that is also, there's an additional danger for the king now. Um, and uh, we'll see if I see if I was a really nice move. And it, what I find amazing about this game is just how she keeps switching from one target to the next. How I don't know how many places this rook has been already, but it was on the D file. Then it went, did its job on the H file. Then it came back to the C file, and uh, it's always something new. So at this point, I think the advantage already starts growing. Yet it's still not that clear. It was good to trade into this end game. And in this type of endgame, you can tell how much better the knight is than the bishop. Hmm. Uh, bishop has no targets to attack while that knight is controlling almost the whole board. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be a good endgame to trade into. Um, but uh, the game went on and you see there's still... She just keeps maneuvering her pieces like this. And it's... Yeah, yeah. all those maneuvers, as you just uh, spotted already or just said already, it's insane. How, right. how and, much back and forth there is going on with all the pieces. And there might they might not even be the best, objectively the best computer moves, but they all mm -hmm. make sense to us because, you know, humans think in plans and not in calculations like computers sure. do. So um, it's still surprisingly, I don't think it's that clear of a win yet because, again, she has no extra material and um, but it's still a permanent advantage. Now the winning move was rook a8 um, to play rook a7 next. Um, but instead she played rook b8, which which is a bit worse, but uh, again, everything is fine. Um, and uh, at this point, I think an unmissed a tactic and uh, played bishop g5. Uh, can you find a way to finish this? I would say... Uh... Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that'll that win. Uh, rook h8 uh, check. Right, rook h... Uh, oh, no, not right. <laughs> I thought it was no. rook h8 too, but it's actually <laughs> next move. It's actually next move that it's coming. Uh, because if rook h8 right away, there's king g7, right? And yeah. our queen is still under attack, and so is our rook. So, unless you sacrifice that exchange... Uh, there's, thought, yeah, I, there's... Hey, I, I, thought, I thought it was the rook h8, uh, but it's actually coming next move. So f4. Because you know was... what? Can I can I quickly? I yeah. just want to to, to quickly uh, show you what I thought. Like I thought I was so yeah. smart. So uh, rook h8 check, and then the king goes to g7, and then I thought I'll play the rook to h7, and then yes. when yeah, but of course uh, it's not it's not working in any way. Yeah, because first of all, <laughs> there's, there's unfortunately th that's not there yet. And once I take the the bishop, all the the attack is fading away quickly because the queen can just move away. I just wanted to clear this up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so f4. Was, f4 it is. It is, and then rook h8 next move. Oh, that's tough to to. And see. do you see do you see what happens on king here? Um. Oh, the the queen is going to d4 with the check. Yeah, exactly. So that's ah. what that's what really this um, e takes f4 did is that it opened up this other diagonal, and and yeah, so the queen is coming to d4, and actually he resigned here after rook h8, I think. <sighs> that was the last move, uh, but uh, but yeah, and queen d4, and uh, and this is winning. So that's the end of the game. He resigned after rook h8. So yeah, I think the Let's stop. I have to. I I don't know how. I just said uh, queen d4 because it looks natural, but uh, I have no idea how this is actually winning. Can we try to to unfold oh, yeah. this? <laughs> Maybe I should uh, try to make you find the final tactic. Bishop f8. Okay. Try to find it. Um. Okay. Uh. Oh. Oh, it's. E5? No, it's not E5. Oh no. I think there is something else. Oh no. Um is it just the No, this cannot be. Huh? Have you found it at home? Oh, I'm okay. I'm stunned for a second. Um Ah, okay, okay now now, now, the, the original plan I had earlier is now working. It is rook to h7, right? Uh, 
Uh, not right away. No. Oh no. No. So well, then it maybe is... actually it could be, but no, I think I think it's something else first. So it is uh, bishop taking f uh, uh, the the knight taking f6. Not the knight. Oh my god, the queen takes f6. Now your rook h7 idea works. And uh, that's the final tactic. You almost had it. And I still failed. Oh, wow. That is uh, pretty beautiful. Yeah. No, you found that rook h7 idea even before I set up the position. So you actually succeeded. <laughs> Thank you so even much. Before I set up. <laughs> that is a beautiful tactic. Anyway, so yeah, but this, um, yeah, this whole whole game of you did Pogger is absolutely instructional and very, very, very interesting. Um, about all, yeah, she always had the advantage. And she always kept the advantage. And with Anand, she had um, an opponent who is sheer absolute world master class and defending like a lion. But she still kept her cool and kind of, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. per performed yeah. Uh, fantastically with all of the moves. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, it, I think it's so exhausting. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, for. Um, just keeping the advantage the whole game and never losing it. And uh, even though she might not have found the fastest way to win sometimes, but it was, she never lost that advantage exactly. that she had. Exactly. So, yeah, and there are a few important principles that were shown here. The principle of two weaknesses, how she always uh, tried to create m more weaknesses. Um, also not rushing when you have an advantage because you're letting the opponent make a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, so the progress may have seemed really slow. There was a lot of maneuvering here, but um, I think important thing to remember is all it takes is one mistake from the opponent. So that's all you're really waiting for. Um, and that's, yeah, that's that's all we need. And uh, also she was really good at really optimizing her pieces and putting them in the best squares mm. and uh, switching between plans. Yeah, that was, that was really interesting. Um, I think uh, I just remembered one more thing. I think there was... Um, you a can, by the way, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you can unshare the screen so oh, so right. we can see okay. each other. Sure. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I don't remember what his name was, but there was a computer science uh, professor who analyzed, I think he was analyzing to find uh, cheaters in chess. And he was, mm -hmm. he went through a lot of games with the computer and he found out that most mistakes happen at the point where you have a plus 0 0.5 advantage. That's where most most of the mistakes in a game okay. lie, is when you actually have an advantage of well, some, somewhere around 0 0.5. So um, that's that's where players commit the most errors, which, uh, which I think shows how difficult it is sometimes to play when you're actually better. Mm, indeed. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I just give my quick anecdote about this. So, um, I often see, and even myself, when I'm blitzing, for example, or I have a rapid game, there is often this moment where you play better than the opponent, which is a feeder master, and I am a grad master, you're a title player too, and I have this better position. And then the uh, grand master opponent <laughs> is just playing it down builds up tricks here and there, waits until I make this one single mistake and it all falls apart. So yeah, the lesson I definitely uh, learned here, it is to, once you have a better position to keep the cool, don't fall for the tricks, make the opponent make more tricks. Well, but then mm -hmm. of course it's also easy said and uh, when you have a much, much, much uh, stronger player, but um, some things to, to keep in mind very, very well. Uh, yeah. yeah, Svetlana, this was v great. How, how did you feel for your first, uh, for, with your first uh, own show? <laughs> um, 
Well, I hope you liked it. Maybe that's <laughs> it's a question for you. Whether <laughs> how do you feel as a student? I enjoyed it big time, and I actually really cannot wait for for the next lesson because yeah, it's a uh, it's very very nice how you gave it all the quite, instructions. It was quite long. I'll make it I'll make it shorter next time. No worries at all. As as I said already, we this is going to be a, a two part uh, series. So yeah. Um, Yes, that that was it from uh, Svetlana. I hope you enjoyed it uh, too at home. And um, that's it for today. And we see each other next week. Bye bye.